everybody, Jacob here. Welcome to my fashion bunker. Today is perfume review day, time of the week, of the month, and um, well, it's time to review another Christian Dior perfume. As you know, for those of you who do follow me on YouTube and know that I um, showcased in my uh, my sex tape routine video or whatever you want to call it, um, a couple of new perfumes that I bought, one of them being Dior Addict. This is the 2014 reformulation. This is how the package looks like. Very important to see this because, you know, there are so many different variations out there so that you know what you're buying. If you're interested in this particular reformulation, this is the package. I have purchased the Eau de Parfum because, you know, the first edition that came out back in 2002 of Dior Addict was an Eau de Parfum. Now, in 2014, we have an Eau de Parfum and an Eau de Toilette. We also have Eau Fraiche and something else, which I'm not really interested in, so I don't know. I didn't really go into it. I don't care for now. What pisses me off, Dior, is that you constantly reformulate your perfumes. And what pisses me, what pisses me, pisses me, now this is like Zoolander 2 now. What's the name of that woman? The pisses me off even more is the fact that the original, what's his name? Thierry Wasser or Wasser was the nose behind the first Dior addict. And then 2012, we have a Demachy reformulation. And then 2014, Demachy goes a step further and makes another reformulation and takes over the name of the perfumer who created this perfume. Demachy, you did not make this perfume. Just because you're the head nose of Christian Dior doesn't give you the right to just castrate everything you do on your path to your ego stardom. Allegedly. And I say this with, you know, the wholeheartedness of alleged speculations, even. Because what gives? Keep a perfume the way it was or take it off the market if too many of the ingredients have become illegal in some countries. But as long as it's not made with heroin, cocaine, or crack, I do believe there are always ways of making it, you know, possible. Placing it in production using substances that are illegal, oh, whatever. Don't even get me started on this, guys. Um, Demashi aside, and all of this weird vibe I'm getting from Dior lately, I have to say that 2014 reformulation is way better than the 2012 reformulation. It is Dior Addict, and I have been wearing it now for a week or two, um, people that have known Dior Addict recognize it on me and ask me if I'm indeed wearing Dior Addict. This has its pros and its cons because I don't really like when people recognize a perfume on me because it kind of, kind of, sort of means that the perfume is wearing you, not the other way around. Tricky. But at the same time, it's a good thing because it does mean that the DNA, that kind of the heart of this fragrance is intact. And addict, as the word says, has to be very recognizable. You have to know that that drug is your drug. So with addict, the name kind of suits the fact that people recognize it on you. Now I know it's, it's, a, it's a far stretch, it's a bit of a conceptual thing to either you accept it or you don't accept it. I accepted it and I love it and I don't know and I don't really think you can see how much I already used of it. Well, anyway, it's up to here. So it went from there to there. Ha! Now, another thing that has been castrated is the bottle. The original bottle had a gold frame. How did it look exactly? It did have like the gold plastified... Well, this is plastic, it's not metal. But it, it was gold in the original release from 2002 and in 2012 as well. This little buttony thing with the Christian Dior logo on top. It's supposed to represent a Christian Dior button. Uh, allegedly again. Could be. And anyway, it used to turn. So you would like kind of turn it and here would be a hole. So when you unlock it, you push it down and the liquid would come out of here. And then you would turn it again and lock it so you won't spray. I mean, of course, it was pretty wobbly in the original version. So if you put it in your purse or whatever, it, would, it could kind of twist on its own. 
So I guess this is a bit more robust as an alternative and in the, indeed in diet, in diet, in diet, you take it off of it. Uh, and uh, by taking it off, this is what you get. You get your little stopper, which is pretty heavy, uh, blue plastic. You have the Dior logo on the inside. Let me get closer. Yeah, well, it doesn't seem easy to see what's in there. Anyway, and then you have the only place where you have the Dior Addict inscription is here. And of course, on the sticker on the bottom. Another thing, stickers at the bottom, that's cheap Dior. Chanel does prints. You can do them too. I mean, you did it here when you spelled out Dior on the bottle by ruining the bottle. I think it would be much more elegant if it were just like that, blue. No? Anyway, it's a beautiful blue color. Why haven't we gotten to the ingredients yet? Well, we're gonna get there now. I'm gonna spray it on and um, look at all this mist. It's a lot of mist. Mm. Interestingly enough, as also many reviewers and perfume lovers out there state, Dior Addict 2014 comes very close to 2002. So people are happy. I have to say I'm happy too. However, what made me so infatuated by Addict was the famous Queen of the Night flower, which is also called the Night Blooming, now Sirius, or Cheros, but I think it's the Sirius in English. Now, if you were to consider something poetic as something that blossoms or blooms in the night, now we're starting to understand why the color of the bottle, it's a cacti flower that allegedly blossoms once a year after midnight for an hour or two, whatever, and then it closes up again. And the scent should be sweet, of kind of a vanilla-ish texture. And that is kind of the heart. That's what permeates this entire Queen of the Night addiction fragrance. And I smell it in the 2014 edition as well, even though, and now we're getting to the ingredients, Mr. Demashi doesn't state that the Queen of the Night is in this reformulation. So what gives? Did we get some sort of chemical uh, synthetic alternative to the Queen of the Night? I'm not so sure, but whatever it is, it still smells like the Queen of the Night. But, however, the list of ingredients has been liquefied to a minimum. Uh, we got top notes, orange blossom, mandarin leaf, then we got the middle note, jasmine and sambac and a bourbon vanilla in the base notes and that's all they give us they're hiding the rest might they be hiding the rest because if they had the same run through of the ingredients as the 2002 formulation then demashi would not be able to put his name on this perfume perhaps allegedly only or are things really different now i do still have a sample of the 2002 addict Mind you, many years have passed since 2002, so the liquid, you know, also modifies itself. The chemistry inside the bottle changes with time. Um, however, of course, the 2014 edition, which I purchased now in 2016, so my bottle, according to this code in the back of it, uh, is probably produced in 2015. So it's fresher than a 2002 edition. And it also smells crispier, cleaner. I think there's also aldehydes in there. It does smell green to me. Pretty green. Um, green, crisp, and the most cliche of all words to describe perfumes, fresh. It has a certain freshness. But it's interesting because that, that crispiness and that greenness kind of tends to already enunciate that there's something lurking beneath in the dark, in the night, something dangerous and very attractive that's going to kind of pop up and capture you and captivate you and uh, make you addicted to this potion. And in fact, the addiction starts 
to me, on my skin, with the 2014 reformulation, half an hour in, not before. Before that, it smells kind of green, crisp, chemical to bitter. There's a certain bitterness that I enjoy, that I find very pleasant. Uh, I find this one mildly pleasant, not very pleasant. But after a certain point, that uh, queen of the night, the, the midnight queen blossom, which could also be vanilla, but then if it is really literally only bourbon vanilla, then they modified it somehow. Something in here has modified its structure because it does turn to that serious, to, to that cacti smelling flower sweetness. And that's what's addictive to me. So, um, I have to say, it does make my mouth water, and it does make you want to keep on smelling it more and more. But as I said again, you have to wait, you know, you have to wait that half an hour, at least on my skin. But once the actual midnight... Queen of the Night or Vanilla kick in, it lasts on my skin for a very, very long time. Six hours, which is long, considering the reformulations of, of Dior lately. Um, it's long and, I have to say, very interesting. It keeps on kind of coming up with whiffs of your own body warmth. And so you... I mean, it's one of those perfumes that kind of, it's weird, because after four hours, I would, if I would just smell it on top for my hand, I would sense again the green. It would kind of go back to the green, but if I would warm it up and then inhale what I, warm, what I just warmed up, I would capture that, that, that sweetness of that vanilla or that cactus or whatever it is, and that would just intoxicate me again in the most positive of ways. So it is definitely addictive, because you find yourself embarrassingly kind of sniffing off your hand or wherever you put it. Uh, all day long and um, I do gravitate towards kind of you know taking my perfume bottles with me when I'm on the road outside the house whatever and I would just like, kind of like respray them over and over again because I, I like the feel and the vibe of that I don't really do it with this one because this one takes me that half an hour time till it kind of settles in and smells pleasant to me like really pleasant at the beginning I have to str I struggle I have to admit I struggle but once the addiction starts, it's just like one of those first commercials that were made with that girl running through the streets of Paris, or I don't know where, what city, in the middle of the night, envisioning herself kind of stealing a bottle of, of addict and, and kind of giving herself a fix of that. Like she just sprays it on and like she's high again. Um, I, well, I don't really get that entire complete drug addiction vibe, but I do love the concept of it. I would love it to be more addictive in that respect to me. At the same time, no, you know what? I, I do kind of feel like that woman running through the streets wanting a fix of addict, but I have to say I do feel more like that woman that's running towards finding a 2002 version, the original version of uh, Addict, and, and kind of getting a fix of that before, you know, all of the liquids that are left over in this world are gone and it will never be produced again. Which brings me to the point of reformulations and Dior. So, um, for those of you who haven't seen my Christian Dior uh, Hypnotic Poison review, this is the reformulated version, check it out. I have spoken about reformulations here too. J'adore has been reformulated, Addict has been reformulated, Miss Dior, Diorella, Dior Essence, you name it, they've all been reformulated, Poison has been reformulated, Pure Poison has been reformulated, Midnight Poison, Kick the Bucket, I don't know if it was reformulated before it kicked the bucket, um, so I'm very upset, and I have the feeling that I'm kind of reviewing watered-down versions of something. But since this is all we got at the moment, or let's ghettoize it, since this is all we got at the moment, I's got to review it because 
I love Addict, and this is all we, we have at the moment. And at the moment, this is better than what 2012 had to offer us as a reformulation. So stock up on this because you never know. The next reformulation might be crappy, might be better, but the way, <laughs> the way this world is taken, not so sure. I am flying tomorrow somewhere, and I will be passing through the duty-free shop, and that means more perfume hunting for me. I wonder what to purchase next because um, I want to go for the Opium uh, Eau de Parfum new formulation because I have here the Eau de Toilette first edition of Opium, which is just divine, but I also have to say a little bit too strong. Divine, but a little bit too strong for everyday use. The Eau de Parfum, for those two, three times that I kind of sprayed it lately when I was shopping, just had it on my skin, you know, just to test it, I really, really liked it. So it's either going to be that, or as I told you already weeks ago in my uh, Poison Girl review, uh, to get 100 ml of this one before they decide to reformulate it too, as I stated in my review. So, after all is said and done, I guess more than a review of Dior Addict, this was a review about Dior's reformulations and Demachie's alleged ego trips. Still, I love my addict. It's... Hmm. It's complex. It's, it's trying to be pleasant and simple and, you know, acceptable and lovable by all. But at the same time, it has that character still poking at you from 2002 that doesn't make it very easily pleasant, you know, or accessible. You have to kind of struggle to fall in love with it. And once you've struggled and once you've fallen into the precipice uh, at the bottom of that uh, deep hole, no pun intended, is... Uh, is your addiction. And the addiction is so strong that you end up buying a reformulated bottle. Think about that. And do try it out before you purchase it. Do not blindly purchase anything that's been reformulated because chances are it's been weakened. And even bigger chances are the price has been raised. How interesting is that? Yeah. Dior, the more you reformulate, the more your super Dacov's sarcasm will grow. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for watching this review. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have, do thumb it up and do subscribe to my channel if you wish to see more perfume reviews and do let me know in the comment section down below what you think about the 2014 formulation of Addict by Christian Dior and also if you prefer the 2012 or the 2002 version. Mind you, I do believe that between 2002 and 2012 there have been other reformulations. But who's to know anymore? Nowadays, it's all a big, uh, a big mess with, with your reformulations. Thank you all for watching. Love you. Don't ever give up on perfume love. <laughs> See you soon. Bye. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed my video. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and check out some of my other videos. I'm also on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. So come on over, guys, and join the fun.